Welcome to Couch Cocktails. I'm Jenny. And welcome to Whiskying. I'm Richard. We're going to give you a double-ended look at a whiskey today. Uh, I'm, I'm the one with a, a lot of talent, so all I'm going to do is taste and tell you about it. <laughs> Jenny, however, is going to mix you up a cocktail. Um, well beyond my skill range, but that's why I'm so uh, so interested in seeing someone with, with some real talents put something together today. You're too humble, Richie. It's an extra special episode today. He's going to walk us through how to taste this uh, delicious Canadian whiskey. And then, like you mentioned, we're going to make a, a delicious drink with it. So yeah, whiskeying, for those who haven't uh, watched before, I, I review Canadian whiskeys. Uh, I think they're totally undervalued, which is really handy when you're making cocktails because you can afford some, some really good whiskey that you don't mind putting in a mix at all. Um, but still get something really tasty. Uh, so today we've got Collingwood. Uh, so I'll do the, the my lo-fi zoom in here. Um, so Collingwood is an Ontario whiskey. Um, and the neat thing about it and why I thought it would make a great taster for today, um, it is aged in good old Canadian maple, maple barrels. So uh, it's not your typical like flavored whiskey. They haven't dumped maple syrup in this thing. It's legit stuff, um, and, but it is a touch on the sweeter side, which I think makes it great for a cocktail. Uh, so I'm uh, gonna walk through how to taste this bad boy, then we're gonna taste it. Jenny's even gonna weigh in as well, uh, and, then, uh, and then we'll go from there. So um, tasting whiskey, uh, pretty straightforward. It doesn't have to be uh, too pretentious here. Uh, you got the nose, right? Uh, now here's the secret to it though. Um, when people think of tasting whiskey, they like take a slug back and then they're like, oh, they're shuddering, it's burning, right? Um, there's two steps you wanna take when you're, when you're tasting it. You wanna take a quick sip and not swallow it right away. You kinda of wanna roll it across the tongue. You wanna to, uh, to let that flavor unfold a bit, let a little bit of that alcohol kind of burn off in your mouth and then let it roll off the back of your tongue and taste how it tastes different. So there's kind of the nose, the palate, the finish is, is what I, I tend to call it. Um, taking it slow is the key thing here. So you don't get that alcohol. Burn. Mm -hmm. Just in case you've, you've, uh, you're thinking about going to the bar and taking a shot. It's not like that. It's not like, that. <laughs> it's not like uh, sniffing a glass of wine either. You don't necessarily want to stick your nose right in because you'll get a little bit of a burn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a real special experience. I have, I uh, actually went to Scotland at one point and, and uh, tasted some, what they call new spirit, like straight out of the still. And they specifically warn you, like, don't stick your nose in that. Like you're going to pass out on the floor right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's still, you, you just kind of, just a hover is good enough. So when we get started on this one, so again, with this being done in maple, you're obviously going to get some maple syrup, a lot of vanilla kinds of notes, but you'll notice it's, um, it's not like pancake syrup sweet, right? So you're just getting that vanilla. I'm getting a little bit of clove. Um, maybe a little bit of like um, sort of very ripe red apple. Yeah, a little bit of baking spice too. Uh, so yeah, it's a really sweet wood. So when they're aging it in maple, uh, it, it, it's absorbing sugar from that wood. So it is going to have that sweet profile. But what's nice about this is it's actually not that sweet on the palate. Mm. Super rich. Um, you don't get a lot of sweetness right off the top of it, but you do, you definitely get some, some more of that fruit note there. Um, that's where I gain like a much stronger vibe of apple. Um, you're getting a little bit like, uh, Jenny, we were talking before the show about it, a little bit of smoke there. It's not that this is smoked in any way, but they'll probably char those barrels. So you're getting a little bit of that char flavor. Yeah, I think the maple wood makes it just that extra bit intensely smoky where you actually get a little bit of that smoke imparted in there. When you think about it, if you're going to toast the inside of a barrel and it's really sugary, that sugar is going to burn up. So you're going to get that much more of that char flavor. So even like it's, it's just resting my mouth now. I'm getting like almost like a, like a, like a steak char sort of, sort of thing. A little bit of like charcoal, almost, almost a touch bitter again, which isn't bad 
when you're thinking this is going to be really sweet. And that's where I'm getting the sweetness is on when it's rolling off the back of my tongue, I kind of get a kick of that. Um, yeah, it's nice and balanced out though by that uh, bit of bitterness, woodiness. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, got some, got, got a forest vibe going on right at the finish there. Um, yeah, so this isn't like the top range for Collingwood, but absolutely um, a whiskey I don't mind sipping on at all. It is one that I'll for sure give to friends who are like have an interest in whiskey, interest in Canadian whiskey. It's like a nice, gentle, but kind of like interesting introduction. Uh, so I think it's a great place. And again, price point, I think we were trying to keep this under 40 bucks. So this is right around that 35, 40 range, um, available in lots of different stores. So it shouldn't be too hard to find Uh great place to start if you want to get into whiskey tasting. specifically. But now, so we've talked about the flavors that we find just in the whiskey. Now, Jenny's going to take it away and add that magic and see what we can layer on this to make it taste like extra special. Awesome, awesome. Thanks for that super informative tasting. Um, I think a lot of people definitely look their, look down on Canadian whiskey. Um, so it's really nice to walk through some really delicious ones. I know there's some fantastic ones out there. So this just happens to be one of them. Um, that being said, normally you would make an old fashioned with bourbon, um, but we're gonna use this one today because it is so delicious. Um, and essentially an old fashioned is just gonna highlight whatever spirit you're using. So might as well start off with something nice. Um, like you mentioned too, it does have that sweet element to it. So it is gonna be a good stand-in for a bourbon which does have some inherent sweetness to it too. Um, and then like we talked about that kind of woodiness, um, that very light, subtle smoke, is just gonna add, I think, an extra layer to this cocktail. Um, making it a pretty awesome old fashioned. So exciting. That being said, we will dive right in. Maybe I'll just polish off the rest of this whiskey. First. <laughs> yeah, don't mind me. I'm still sipping because I'm still enjoying them. Nothing wrong with that. So, so Jenny, what are we adding to this today? Like I, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna at least pretend I know nothing about cocktails. So what else <laughs> goes into an old fashioned? Yeah, so an old fashioned. Um, I mean, a cocktail itself, it was originally created to kind of round out and soften the harsh, harsh edges of a spirit. Um, like back in the day when old fashioned was created, um, spirits did not have the, the smoothness and, uh, you know, delicious, uh, you know, tendencies they do now. They, they used to not have uh, great technology and uh, the knowledge that we have now just makes our spirits a, a lot better than back in the day. Um, so usually you would just want to add a little bit of, um, bitters, a little bit of sugar and some aromatics to kind of, um, just soften the edges of that spirit, but just kind of round, round it out and, and make something a bit more new and, and unique out of it. So, so that's about it. It doesn't, not, not a whole lot to it. Um, for syrup, we're going to use a Demerara syrup. This one I've made ahead of time, but it's essentially equal parts sugar and hot water, just stir and dissolve. Um, so we're using a Demerara sugar. This is a, a richer, um, more natural sugar than a white sugar. Um, also, if you'll notice, the color kind of matches the color of the whiskey. Um, so they're each gonna bring out kind of those, uh, you know, richer, more decadent notes in each other. Um, you can also use maple syrup. I think that would be an, an excellent choice in this one, given the maple wood. Um, and then for bitters, this is just your standard Angostura bitter. Um, any, any recipe that calls for bitters, this is gonna be like your classic go-to. Um, it's just heavily spiced, um, quite intense. So you usually just use a, a couple drops. Um, this definitely adds that aromatic element um, and just to, acts to tie all the ingredients together. Um, and then we're going to finish with an orange peel. The essential oils on the outside of the orange are best captured if you peel off a slice and then you kind of rub it around the, the rim just to get that uh, nose around the edge of the glass. And uh, yeah, I think we'll get into it now. Does that sound good? It sounds great. Uh, one interesting thing, I, I don't even know if we have an answer, but like 
uh, whiskey can kind of have an oily quality to it itself. Like if you roll whiskey around a glass, you'll see it kind of has legs, right? Not unlike wine, um, but whiskey being thicker will have that even more. So I'm really curious about how the oils in an orange kind of play with the oils uh, in a whiskey. Absolutely. So I just, uh, I just wanted to say I added two ounces of the whiskey and I'm adding a quarter ounce of the syrup. If you want it a little bit sweeter, you can do a half ounce, um, but just try it out with a quarter ounce first and see how it tastes. And then to answer your question, I think everything we taste is, uh, you know, ultimately a mix of flavors and textures. So the more you can play off those textures as well as the flavors, it's just gonna be a better result. Um, so definitely those oils of the orange, they're gonna kind of linger on the outside of the glass um, and kind of on top and definitely add a little bit of brightness to kind of that oiliness you were talking about. Um, before I do add that though, a few dashes of bitters. You can add anywhere from two to six or more drops of this um, if you want a little bit of extra spicy, but I'm gonna add about four drops, add some ice and give it a stir. That's super simple. If you guys are stirring at home, you wanna make sure the spoon, um, the back of the spoon should just kind of coast around the inside of the glass, just along the, the inside. So you're not like me where you're trying to like make it like a blender. Like I should be taking this gentle. It's, it's truly a stir. A gentle process. Yeah, that's why you <laughs> never shake an old fashioned. Um, you don't want to agitate the ice too much. It's just a light dilution. Um, cause if you're shaking it, you're going to dilute it a heck of a lot more. And uh, frankly, it's not at all fashion <laughs> to shake it or uh, agitate the ice too much. So now we're gonna give it a pour over a nice big cube. That's gonna help um, the drink not dilute too quickly either while you're enjoying it. And then finally, a nice orange peel. Get a nice thick peel. And like I mentioned, the oils are on the outside here. So you want to actually rub it on the outside of your glass several times and then give it a little spritz. And that'll just let those oils just dance on the top of your cocktail. And I wish I wish I could send you one right now. <laughs> you'll, have to, uh, you'll have to- Damn this it. pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> now that's an old fashioned. Cheers. Cheers. Well, give us a give us a quick. What do you notice that's different from the uh, from just the whiskey itself? Yeah. Well, right away, I'm getting like a burst of that citrus orange brightness, um, and it really kind of takes away from that richness and uh, and sweetness of the whiskey. And then I'm getting those aromatics from the the bitters as well. And then overall, just a little bit less harsh because we've diluted it a little bit. Um, just fantastic. I wish, <laughs> I wish you could have a taste. It's a, it's a nice, it's a nice one. Believe it or not, I've had them before, but I, I can, I'm just imagining what the old fashioned I've had before, but with that, those extra layers of the, ma the maple flavor and that, um, I'm sure it's lovely. Yeah. yeah. Um, yes. So we'll have to do another one of these, uh, when we can actually like get together and you can like show me the proper way to do this. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, a real, uh, real pleasure. I'm still just enjoying drinking this. So, you know, I, oh, I'm yeah. doing fine over here. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have rushed through that glass, but um, this old fashioned is quite nice as well. I wanted to mention too, like, if you wanted to add a little bit of extra orange, you can even muddle the, the orange peel in there too. Um, everyone makes an old fashioned in a different way. If you're muddling any other fruit in an, an old fashioned, probably not a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be very old fashioned at that point at all. No, no. Um, so, yeah. From the whiskey side, I think if you wanted to like amp it up a notch, um, I'm a big, big fan of like your 100% rye whiskeys. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so suggestions for that direction, again, not spending a lot of money. Alberta Premium, way overlooked. A lot of people raise their noses at it. Cheap, cheap, like 20 bucks for a 2.6, but um, it's, 
it's got that wonderful rye spice quality to it. And that can be a bit dry for some people at times, but I think it'd be great once you add that syrup, um, once you've got the orange, so then you'd have a little bit of an orange spice jam. It's going to be a much bolder kind of flavor, I'd imagine. But, you know, for that next level thing to try, definitely would suggest going that route. Yeah, great suggestion. I have a bottle of that, you know, <laughs> in the other room and I, I love that whiskey. Like you said, it's great for sipping and for making a drink with. Um, so it's just an all around awesome bottle to have on hand. And yeah, it's going to have a bit more kick to it, a bit more of that crisp, uh, peppery spice. Um, so yeah, definitely play around with, uh, with the whiskey you use. And, you know, if you're feeling extra, extra creative, you can swap it out for some mezcal and tequila, make a Oaxacan old fashioned. Oh, damn. <laughs> next, level. next level that's a whole other episode right there yeah oh yeah we'll have to do another one for that for sure <laughs> Matt, awesome. well thanks thanks so much Richie this was so much fun I know it, uh, it's uh it's really great to talk about whiskey and like in so many different ways people get a little bit obsessed with uh you know the purity of a single malt or whatever I love that we're taking something that's tasty on its own but then playing with it too um Whiskey doesn't have to be pretentious. That's the whole, that's the whole jam with my show. And I, and I love what Jenny's doing here with it uh, and, you know, getting a bit creative. So uh, we'll do this again and, uh, and try something else. Why not? Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, Richie. It was a, uh, it was a pleasure to collaborate and I'm looking forward to some more fun whiskeys we're going to dive into and, and make some fun cocktails with. All right. One more last cheers here. Cheers. Cheers.